Joining us now to discuss, Bernstein senior analyst Stacey Rags Raskon, excuse me, with an outperform rating, $575 price target for the stock. We're at 590 at the moment. Stacey, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. First take on good the numbers. Here. Numbers look great. I mean, it, it was a pretty strong quarter, you know, pretty close to a blowout, both in the quarter as well as the guide. Gaming very strong, which, which we expected. I mean, like they're selling every part they can have made for them right now. Um, even some upside in data center. Gross margins look good. OPEX looks good. Um, we'll see how they sound on the call. But at, at, at first glance, everything looks really solid here. I mean, clearly it's had a great run. And it, it is up after hours because of uh, the strong, strong numbers and guidance. Uh, your, your price target at 575, I guess, says it all in terms of whether there's much more room for expansion in the short term. Well, I mean, they just guided massively above the street, so presumably numbers will be going up. All right. I, I mean, we'll we'll see. Stacey, I, I mean, I don't 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 take the, the target price like in any given moment like too serious. The stocks had a massive run, as you as 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 you said, and things can tend to get out of whack like in in short periods of time. But in general, you know, they guided well above um, everything that I can see at first glance. At least looks looks just fine. Looks very very strong. We'll see how they sound um, in in about a half an hour when the call starts. Just wanted to broaden out a little bit because there's other chip news, which is the Biden administration oh, yeah. signing an executive order to review the, the chip shortages, yeah. among other things. And this is obviously an, a pretty acute issue right now for automakers and electronics makers, but it, it is a longer term structural one, isn't it? How do we make chips in the U.S. in, in, a, so, in yes, a more so productive and affordable way? You're right. So, so one of the few bipartisan areas of agreement right now is to try to increase uh, the U.S. base for semiconductor manufacturing. The shortages right now have nothing to do with any of, of that. That would be happening, regard, especially in automotive, where they would happen regardless of what the U.S. Uh, manufacturing base looked like. The, the auto shortages are happening because the auto OEMs canceled all their orders in the midst of COVID last year. And it just takes the supply chains um, a, a, a while to adjust. Um, we've had some, some whipsaws. So that would be happening. It's not really the semi guy's fault. It, it's the auto supply chain. But to, to the extent that the shortages themselves are sort of focusing attention and jumpstarting the debate on what we should be doing in terms of semiconductor manufacturing in, in the U.S., I think that actually is where the discussion can be useful. And, and you're right. Biden's putting out an executive order, not just for semis, but for a variety of um, uh, strategic technologies, at least for now, to review the supply chains, to try to identify the areas where there are sort of like critical bottlenecks and to try to address those. And it, and it will be a very long time. Like we're not going to be building massive amounts of semiconductor capacity in, in the United States, like on a dime, like instantly. You, you, not only do you need to spend the money, and, and by the way, you need to spend a lot of money, much more than they're talking about right now. You also have to get customers and you have to train employees to, to work there. And I mean, it, it's, a, it's a huge holistic effort that probably needs to happen if we're serious about it. But this is a start. And so we'll, we'll see where things go from here. I'm sure we'll be talking to you about it again soon, Stacey. Thank you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.